This Hi. conference will now be recorded. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. So before I start uh, related to SAP about me, I know like what kind of experience you have. So I'm working uh, as a as a EWM consultant here in, uh, in Canada with FGA Brands, and uh, so it's been three years. And I'm um, uh, like I am familiar with coding, but since like I've, I haven't done it in a while, so okay, been on the functional okay. side, yeah. Okay, so what all things you have done in coding? Like I've done VBA, I've done Python a bit. Okay, not in a bab. I not like you have something in a bab. Not in a bab. No, okay, okay. So any idea like uh, okay, what is the requirement for getting into a bab? No, 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 I I don't want to get fully into a bab. It's just for uh, like. Uh, uh, like un just about uh, like understanding the code and like debugging and uh, all those um, data upload tools. I want to be, be get get better at them. Like uh, LSMW, LTMC. Okay, and, okay, okay. Uh, like if if I have to find uh, uh, find uh, what what uh, like Pappy's for a given given program or let's say maybe uh, baddies and uh, how to find them and if there's a code right. included. Uh, you know, you know, getting a code. Yeah. yeah. So how do okay. I go about it and uh, hmm. things like that? Okay. So as far as this app is concerned, as far as SAP is concerned, like you must be very much familiar with the screen and interfaces, like different kind of decode we have, different kind of processes we have, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah that think... I'm familiar with. Yeah, 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 uncle, cool, yeah. Okay. So as far as ABAP is concerned, right, you know, ABAP is a programming language created by SAP for its own application development, right? Uh -huh. Like in SAP, we have different multiple functional modules, right? Sales, finance, HR, production, quality, right? And all right. the functional modules, they have their own business processes. And in mm -hmm. SAP, we have hundred standard business processes, right? But right. at times, depending on like which company, which client is implementing SAP, their requirement is different, which is not they're in SAP, right? Mm -hmm. Or they have a different business processes. They want some kind of tweaking in the in the standard business processes, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary every time you can go and make changes in the standard business process. And that is not usually not done, right? So what we can do as an adapter, depending on what kind of business requirement functional people have, we can develop the business processes. We can develop reports. We can right, develop right. screens, defines like define different kind of business processes, right? Interfaces and everything can be done through programming in ABAP. Right. So majorly, yes. as far as ABAP is concerned, we handle programming part as well as database. Right. right? Yeah. Obviously, we are creating different program, different business processes. We have to define database in the back end because mm -hmm. applications have to be dynamic, right? So we will be creating and managing the whole database in the back end. And designing interface for the functional user. And right. when we're designing interfaces, we will be defining validations depending on the business department. Right. Right. Okay. Have you ever seen any kind of database tables in SAP? Uh, sorry, what? Oh, what was that? Have you, have you ever seen any database table in the back end? Database tables like through SC16, um, like we access tables every day. But okay, uh, right. other than that, uh, right. so you access as a functional user, you have an access to SC16, 16, 16 yes, end, right? where you can go and you can define the table, name of the table, right? Yeah. And you can see all the records depending on what all fields you want to be, you can check, uncheck, and you can execute it to view the data, right? Right, that is this decode is accessible to the functional user, uh -huh. right. But if we talk about the back end, right? Here, what you can see, you can see all the data and everything, right? But mm -hmm. as far as the technical things are concerned related to this table will not be accessible to this T code, right? So what we have, we have a T code as a developer, we have access to this T code SE11. Yeah, yeah. Where I can go and I can do all the database related things, right? I can create a table. I can view a table, right? Here we have an option display, change, and create. So, right. table, views, data type, 
type groups, domain, search help, block objects, data elements, everything can be created through this T code. Like if I am, I, again, I see the same table, the one we saw in SC16N. Right, you know, this is a standard table related to material master. Mm -hmm. Right, same way like we had different modules and different tables. Now I can see the technicalities of this table. Right, it contains 252 fields. Right, these are the fields. These are the data elements. These are the data types. What type of data will it be holding? What will be the length of that particular field? At right. max, how many characters can hold? Description is here. Right. You can see all the technicalities in which package it is. Like if any point of time, if you have to, like you were mentioning about searching of baddies, baddies or exits or any other thing, right? In that scenario, you need to know where that particular program is stored, where that particular table is stored in the backend, right? So package information is here, right? Any point of time, if you go to this package, you'll be able to find different kind of objects stored here. Delivery and maintenance allowed, right? If anybody can go and make changes in the table, right? Like if you go to SC16 and you can only view data, you cannot enter data, right? Right. And you must have seen, uh, like we have an access functional people have access to SM30 as well. Okay. Right. Have you ever access SM30? No, I haven't used SM30. Okay. SM30 is used for making entries into the table, deleting entries into the table. Okay. Right. What we can do in SC11, we can create a table, we can create a view, right? A maintenance view, and that maintenance view will be accessible to functional user via system 30, where they can go and make changes into the table. Right? Okay. Depending on the requirement, they can add record, they can delete records, they can perform different kind of operations on the database. Table. Like we have a code SM30. Right here, you can a maintenance view is created. You can give this name, right? You click on maintain. Right now, it says the maintenance view is not maintained. Right, if we want the user to be able to modify the content of the team, we can create a view and give access to them. Mm -hmm. So, uh modifying a table then generally that's not allowed for for the end user right like uh, in what depending on we... like if you if you have to create a customers right you can go and create it through the t code yeah right but like if we have some tables where they want to go and make editing in the table entries into the table right create entries delete entries modify entries Right, there are scenarios where the functional people might be might require to make changes in the table. Okay. Right, beat any kind of operation, add, delete, modify. Mm -hmm. Right, in that scenario, we create a maintenance, and that maintenance you will be accessible via SM30. Okay, okay, SM30. Like you said, no, obviously not everybody will be having an access to it. Only the authorized person will be having an access to that people. Mm -hmm. Getting it. Yeah. So all these things can be done right now. If you come to this another tab, this shows how the tables are connected with each other. In SAP, we have hundreds of tables. Right. Right. And every table has to be connected with each other. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. If, if you're talking about the customer table, right? We have all the customer details in a customer table, and we mm -hmm. have another table which is sales authority. Right. If the two tables will be independent, how will you identify like which customer bought which product or which sales order is a particular sales order is corresponding to which customer? Customer, right? Yeah. Right. Whenever you're generating a sales order, it has to be corresponding to at least one customer, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to map those tables in the back end that okay, when you're generating a uh, sales order, it will be corresponding to one customer. Right. Getting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Right. If you're generating a in a production planning, if you're generating a bomb, bills of material, right? In bills of material, you have to define material, right? Mm -hmm. And unless that material is defined in material management, you'll not be able to use it in a bomb. Right. Yeah. Right. So in the back end, tables have to be connected. And like I said, when you're talking about this sales order, 
you have to connect it to the customer but yeah. you also need to define that that uh, sales order table is connected to a material mm -hmm. because if you sell you will be selling it to a customer and you will be selling at least one material right yeah right so material has to be connected with sales order customer has to be connected with sales order mm -hmm. right and whenever a sales order is generated whatever quantity they are selling it has to get debited from the warehouse inventory right right so tables are connected in the back end whenever you're handling any business process it's not just the business process which is happening right in the back end n number of tables might be getting updated updated yeah right so all those things are defined through a logic in the back end right so let's say let's say first if i start with the database part okay when you're creating any handling and managing any database right you don't need to worry about writing any sql query right like you might have written in uh, vba python or any other thing while handling a database you have to write sql queries in case yeah, of yeah, a path, yeah. to, to extract data yeah. if you to... right, right 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 so in case of a map you don't need to worry about writing any sql query it is totally gui based like let's say if i'm i'm creating a small table then i'll switch to program as well sorry what's that yes. if you're creating a small table then i'm creating it i'm showing you the database part first right how okay. database is managed right and then we'll move to the programming part okay right let's say if i'm creating a table i'm giving a name of the table right mm -hmm. i'm creating it right these are all the configuration part initially everything has its own purpose like why what type of table will it be whether it's an application customizing system table customizing controlling table right so i'm choosing an application table we'll go in depth of each and everything later on right here i'm defining whether display maintenance allowed not allowed or restricted right like in mara we have shown it is restricted that means nobody will be able to make entry directly into the table if I'm defining it as allowed, then we have technical settings, right? Asking me where to save it. I'll give my name of the package. Whenever you're creating anything, it has to get saved in a package. So yeah, what's a package? I've seen it a lot, uh, but I, I don't really know. Package is, package is basically a folder, right? Like when you're creating it, like even in your local system, if you're creating a doc file, it mm -hmm. asks you where to save it right it will ask you where to save that file right you have to give some some space like where you'll be saving it i'll just show you a package we have a t code SCAP, which is object navigation right this is SCAP object navigator here i can see a package Right here, if I click this, I'll get a list of all the packages which are there in the system, standard one and the customized one. Right, just now we saw when we were seeing this um, Mara table, it was an MG package. Okay. Remember? Oh, yeah. right. uh, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't see how, how you navigated to that yet. Yeah. Okay. Just now we saw, no, like when we were going to any table in SC11, Right, even if I'm giving this Mara table and click on display. Right. In attributes, we can see it is saved in an empty package. So how did you uh, navigate to this uh, attribute? Like uh, like if you go to it, right, you click on database, give the name of the table, click on display. This you get to see the table. Here we have multiple tabs. If I click on oh, attributes, okay. attributes, okay. Right, I get to know when the table is created, last changed. Mm -hmm. Right, and the package in which it is saved. Now right. I have the list. I have the package name. Okay, tell me a T code which you use frequently. Like uh, I mean, there are lots. Um, M A twenty three N. Let's say for M A twenty three N. Right. If you go to this M A twenty three N. Right. Like as of now, like you said, like you have some issues related to this. 
10, right? So what I can do as a technical one, right? You have this key code. If I go to the system, right? I click here to get the technical information, right? Now what I can see, this is my key code. Corresponding to this key code, this is my program name. This is my screen number, right? This is my sub screen, sub screen number, right? This is my GUI status. Right, I have this detail now. Let's say if I click on this sub screen, right? We have this sub screen. Now, if I'll click on this one, two, two, six, this is my screen number. Mm -hmm. If I just double click this or any other program number, right? What I'll do, I'll just double click this screen number to take me to that screen, right? Can you see this is my screen number, right? So, which I double click. Right here, I get again. If I click on the attributes here, what I can see, it is stored in a package me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and if I let's say if I click on the layout, I'll get the interface. Right, just with the T code, I got to know what is the name of the program what is the name number of the screen and how things are defined and declared in the back mm -hmm. so yeah these things all, all these things are uh, uh uncle i need to learn like uh how to find the includes and in the program how to debug it and how to read the code like this is my objective how to create a query in sq01 and uh, this is the content which I'll be having, which we'll be having in the course, right? Like okay. this is the basic one, right? Like, for considering the person is not coming from an SAP background, what is ERP? Why do we need ERP advantages, SAP, RP, architecture, landscape, mm -hmm. right? Basics of a BAP, right? What is a BAP? What is the purpose of a BAP? Packages, right? The very first thing, like I said, whenever you're creating anything, mm -hmm. right? You have to save it in a package. So before saving it in a package, you need to understand how a package is created. Right, what is the difference between a local package and a package? Right, transferring objects from one object to uh, one package to another package. Mm -hmm. Right, so the very first thing which we will be doing, right, understanding the concepts of package. Then we have the whole data dictionary part, right? How a table is created, how a primary key is defined, a foreign key is defined, how tables are mapped with each other, views, structures, search helps everything related to database table in SC11. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be coming to the programming part, starting from the very basics, considering a person is not coming from a programming background, right? What are the different type of commands we have? What are the, how you are declaring a variables? Like in Python also, you must have seen, right? You must, right, yeah. um, you must have used Anaconda or Eclipse, I guess. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. IDE, I think it's called an IDE. Right, right. So you might have used Anaconda. Yeah, I use Anaconda and the Jupyter Notebook for that. Right. So that is your IDE, right? So even in there, even in the Python, you must have seen how the very first thing is like declaration of the variables. Because unless you have the variables, you cannot do any kind of operations. Yes, right? yes, You yes. need to do those things. Yeah, I'm aware of, yes. So how those variables are declared in programming in a BAP? Right, yeah. using data parameter constant, different data types, integer character, numeric, date, time. Right, yes. we have standard variables as well. Uh -huh. How to variables are declared, how to define different kind of operations corresponding to those variables. Mm -hmm. Earth performing a kind of arithmetical operations, logical operations, conditional operations, right? Loops, mm -hmm. nesting. Right, then we have selection schemes, how to define redo button, check boxes, how to define their functionalities how to define a selection screen, how to give validations, right? Then we have internal tables, which is quite important, right? How internal tables are created, what is the purpose of internal table, how internal tables are created and populated with data, how to navigate it, right? This okay, is quite so important. Internal tables, internal tables, you mean the Z tables, or? No, no, Z table is your, Custom table, custom your database table. table, right? These are your database tables. Internal, Internal tables, tables are, okay. are created within the program. Okay, within the program. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Internal 
tables are created within the program to store data right if you see the difference the table is created which will be holding your data physically and permanently mm -hmm. an internal table is something which will be storing your data within the program okay. depending on your requirement. right depending on what kind of requirement you have it will hold it will fetch data from this database table and store it in internal table which will be local to your program okay for better processing or faster processing mm -hmm. right modularization right you must be aware of function modules and includes like you were mentioning yeah uh, function right. modules i'm aware of uh, hmm. these are like so how uh, do, already available and how do you uh, find out like which both, function module is both, available both right? you, if you want to search like both we have standard function modules as well as we have custom function modules we can create okay. function modules create function modules. right okay. if you want to search t code is sc37 mm -hmm. right for function module right like if you want to search for any function module you can come here you can mention here let's let's say if i like if i'm searching for any function module right mm -hmm. let's say i'm searching a function module for alv mm -hmm. right i don't know any other, any other thing i know like it's it might be related to alv so i have given an asterisk if i click in f4 i'll get a list of all the function modules related to this criteria right then with the description i can identify like what particular which function module it is being used right here i get a list of all the function modules mm -hmm. which function module you have been using uh, no no uh, i've seen function module we we haven't used any but uh, i've seen like uh, this uh, okay. like terminology mm -hmm. repeated uh, over and over so i was just curious okay, but what are the modules and how do we find it and uh, let's say if we have so to use it I, I used it once to convert uh, like uh, uh, to convert unit of uh, measures unit of measures yeah 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 so i knew it you must have used it <laughs> this is the reason i was giving a unit here yeah right so when you search for it right let, let's see if i don't know the name right i know you can I, i need something for the unit conversion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what i can do i can search for it or like let's say if i give this it might further filter it out right now you can see like these are the different function modules right so this way i can search for different function modules depending on what all parameters i am passing right right so as 37 is a t code right right if i give a function name of the function module right i click on display in sc37 i can see what all import parameter it is using right what i can do i can give what all parameters it is using and what like if you want to search for any specific package right you can give the name of the package like let's say if i delete it i give the name of the package here so what it will do it will give me a list of all the function modules which are defined in me package getting it okay. yeah, yeah yeah and if you click any of the any of the function module let's say if i create the get right again everywhere you will find an attribute attribute gives you a list of where all the information is stored okay right now in if you talk about import import me you can check it out what all input parameters it requires mm -hmm. when you will be calling function module it will be asking you for these parameters now by by seeing the name you can already find so you can come to the description you can come to this function module and you can see what descriptions is defined here getting it right right 
so what all input parameters it needs what output parameters it will be having right what all tables it will be using and finally you have a code which is defining all the logic getting it yeah, yeah, yeah. so that is the model part so if we talk about include subroutine and function modules we have the standard ones and we will be creating our own customized ones. right how we can create a function module how we can create a subroutine how we can create an include what is the purpose of these three everything we will be doing it tactically then we have the database accessing right the table which you have created in the program which you are creating how you can write different kind of sql queries right which can perform your select insert delete and update update modify operations mm -hmm. how you can connect your program to the database table how you can create your own customized key codes like i said you are creating a program now you need to give access uh, of that program to the user right user will not be having an access to sc38 or sc18 or sc11 mm -hmm. so what we'll be doing creating our own key code a custom key code and give it to the functional user. okay debugging like you were mentioning we'll be learning how debugging is done whether it's a standard program or a custom program right then we'll be learning how different type of reports are created classical interactive and alv reports what are the difference between the three reports and how these reports are created right so these reports uh, like are um uh, you're using codes code code to build, build it right and not not the sq01 or sq02 <laughs> we will be doing it through programming and coding programming and coding okay right sq01 02 and 03 right you create a user group you create a query and you create a ticket so here you don't need to do any kind of programming it's just a drag and drop thing okay right we'll get to programming then like we have added one right functional flow understanding of functional flow and functional module like i said whenever you're talking about as an, uh, as an abapper the task of an abapper is to develop functional modules develop business processes for functional modules so you right. need to have the understanding and knowledge of the functional business process right right right, right yeah like if i'm today i'm working for sales right so i need to understand the terminologies i need to understand the process like if a requisition is if in material management if the requisition is raised what is the requisition what is the purpose of requisition? the requisition is raised which table from which table will it be getting data is corresponding to that requisition i'm getting inquiries right then which table will be getting affected which table i'll be fetching data from once that uh, is processed how it will be affecting the rest of the tables right yeah yeah that right that so you need possible. to have so you need to have understanding and knowledge of the functional tables and their integration the process integration as well right 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 yeah. Right, like if a simple example, like if a sales order is getting generated by a salesperson, uh -huh. before generating a person, he has to check it out with the stock knife that uh, if that product is available in that quantity or not. Right. Getting it, which will be integrated with material management, and before uh, selling it any uh, anything, selling anything to a customer, you need to check the credit limit of that customer. He might be having a credit limit of one lakh. He had already purchased. Goods worth eighty lakh thousand, right? Mm -hmm. he's asking for fifty thousand. You cannot sell it, even if you have it in the stock. Right. Yeah. Right. So you need to check it with the credit limit of a customer with the finance. Right. You might be having. He might be having a credit limit. He might be having a product in the stock, but you need to check it out with the shipping department. Right. Like you are in Canada. Like if you want to order anything in India for Amazon dot in, it will not take your order because you have different country. Right. You not be able to sell anything from Amazon. Right. Dot A to right. Getting it. So shipping availability, they need to check if it is feasible or not. So everything is done in the back end. Right. But for a salesperson, it's only about clicking a sales order, uh, putting a pin code there, zip code there, and checking if that. How much time will it be taking to deliver, and what will be your shipping charges? 
Yeah, that's that's why uh, I like thought of uh, thought of getting this training. That's why I spoke to Sai because somewhere uh, like uh, functionally, like I'm able to find things and how things are happening. But somewhere like uh, technically, I'm not that sound. I need some training on that. That's why that's the purpose of uh, uh, reaching right. out to Sai. So, what will you do? Understanding in the back end how things are done in the back end application. Right. Yeah. Then this BDC, right? That how you can upload data from an Excel file or a text file into SAP system in bulk. Yeah, uploads as well. Like I'm not uh, really good with the uh, like I know how to create an LSMW or TMC. I can do it, but I'm not. Uh, SMW like again, LSMW is for the functional user where you don't need to worry about any kind of programming and coding, right? right. BDC is the same thing what you do to LSMW, but in BDC, it's all about programming and coding. So here you have all the possibilities of any kind of conditions or validations you need to put. Everything can be done through BDC. Okay. Like you you were mentioning about a back query, right? SQ01, 02, LSNW. These are the things used by the functional user where they don't have to worry about any kind of programming. They can do things on their own, right? It has total, it has an interface, you can handle it. But in case right. of programming, you have the whole control. Depending on the logic, depending on the scenario, depending on the process, you can define each and every time. Okay. Right. Then we have scripts and forms, which are for the page layout designing. How a page layout will be designed. Mm -hmm. When you talk about page layout, it's all about like if you are generating an invoice, if you're generating a billing, if you're generating a gate pass, if you're generating an ID card. Right, vouchers, credit right, memos, right. Yeah. So all the things they have a standard layout. Right? right. The value changes, but the layout remains standard. Mm -hmm. So how those layouts are generated to this smart box. Yeah. Then we had dialogue programming, designing the whole screen from scratch. Screens, menus, title bar, controls, everything. How it can be generated through dialogue programming. Mm -hmm. Then we have object oriented about how classes methods are defined, how interfaces are defined, how functionality is defined, how it can be created, how it can be used in a program. Then we have the one you were mentioning, the very first thing you were mentioning about the baddies. Mm -hmm. Right? How to finding standard baddies and implementing. Right? Your very first query. Yeah. Right. Searching for baddies. Right, creating programs and using standard and custom BAPIs. So, yeah, what's the difference? Like, these things I need to understand baddies and BAPIs, or what's the difference? It's an application interface, I, I can understand, but how is it actually it, used and how it differs from BADI? Uh, BADI is used for enhancement, right? BADI is used for enhancing a standard functionality in SAP. Okay. okay. And BAPI is used, for, it is like you said, it is a business programming application interface which is usually used for transferring data from one system to another system. Oh, okay. Is and it, is it is used for one system to other system or uh, between, uh, like, uh, can it, it be? It can be SAP to SAP, it can be SAP to non-SAP. Non-SAP, okay. This is the reason you see interface, application programming interface. Mm -hmm. Right, like both systems need to have an API. Oh, yeah, one of the scenarios that uh, we were discussing with business was that uh, so we're doing we were doing a third party uh, third party scenario third for two. sales for sales and purchasing. Like purchasing comes along with sales, so we were discussing that once the sales order was will be created and then we'll create a purchase requisition. And again, right. the purchase requisition will create a purchase order, and again, the purchase order will uh, go mm -hmm. to the, the vendor uh, right. to a different company in our case, and then the company will sell looks and the good to the customer. So, right, right. Is like we were discussing, and uh, uh, but the but the catch was like, what happens if the customer changes the the quantity of goods he needs? Let's say you order 100 cases, and but now he needs only uh, 80, and mm -hmm. that purchase requisition 
might not get changed. I think purchase acquisition was getting changed and uh, it was wasn't updating uh, the, the budget. Initial Sorry? order which I'm I'm saying like this will be possible because like if you are having raising a requisition for 100 quantity later on and based on that 100 quantity you raise the purchase order. Yeah. Right? Later on change the quantity from uh, from 100 to 50. So uh -huh. that might lead might change your quotations as well, your pricing as well. Right. Hmm. So uh, pricing and quotation it might change uh, it might change but let's let's say if it does not change and if it remains the same and we now want because we cannot uh, if it's the within within the time limits we cannot say within the lead time we cannot say no to the customer let's say we change mm -hmm. it and the purchase acquisition uh, so uh, like we were talking to st people they were saying that purchase acquisition will get changed but uh, right. purchase order was not getting updated so mm -hmm. uh, that's where they uh, one of the guys suggested okay we can use a bappy so mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't understand the concept like how BAPI will be used because my understanding was okay BAPI is used for IDOCs and once the IDOC is processed it says that okay BAPI is updated or something. Like BAPI, is, like BAPI is an interface right you it, it works on EDI concept right electronic data interchange. Okay. Right so like if you have two systems so if you'll be making change in the one system right and you use it through BAPI it will be updating your another system as well okay so if you're making changes here in the purchase order right it won't be reflecting uh, details on the client system as well. okay but let's say if we are uh, updating uh, purchase acquisition and uh, purchase acquisition is getting updated from the sales order and if we have to update uh, purchase order from the purchase acquisition mm -hmm. so would, would mm -hmm. we use a BAPI or would, would we use a, some type of coding in that case this scenario like if you're talking about the request and request is created on your system right purchase order is created on your system for you yeah. whatever you purchase order that will be acting as a sales order for the another person yeah again the purchase order is also the same it's it's on our system uh, so, so in if you're changing a purchase order in your system and put uh request in your system then in this scenario you don't need a papi because that is local to your system okay okay yeah, that's but what I thought. Do that, do that. If you want to get your client system should get updated, then you need to use a BAP. No, that was uh, that was that was uh, achieved because once we update the purchase order, it will send a purchase. It will send a change IDOC, right? It will generate a change output type, yeah. and that will be triggered. Uh, I think 856 or something like that. EDI gets triggered and it goes to the uh, goes right. to the vendor. So, but he mentioned BAPI, so I, was, I got confused. Like, okay, can we use a really use a BAPI here? So I need to like understand all these concepts, and so that I'm I'm clear on myself. Uh, so like, like I said, in the content also you can see we have an BAPI overview creation of the BAPI, right? Mm -hmm. Difference between BAPI and exit. Difference between BAPI and function modules. Right. Right. Creating remote and full function modules because BAPI is basically a remote enabled function module. Right, like you have already been function modules in SE 37, right? Mm -hmm. BAPI is created via function module, but okay. it is a remote enabled function module. Okay, remote enabled. Okay. Right, if you're creating a function so, module, you can find a standard function module. Sorry? Yeah, tell me. So, by remote enabled, you mean like. Uh, it can be accessed remotely. What do you mean by that? Like by other system? Or... Right. Right. If you see a function module, by default it is a in attributes. You see by default it is a normal function module. But you yeah. define it as a remote enabled function module. You select it here. It can be used as a BAPI. Right. Obviously there are other processes as well to handle it and process it. But huh. when you're creating a BAPI, it has to be a remote enabled function module. Which can yeah, be accessed remotely from another system. concept. I don't understand because we're using this uh, like it's the same concept that uh, we use in EWM as well, right? Uh, although it's it's embedded in uh, S4, but uh, mm -hmm. it's remote function call, right? Uh, um, yeah, right. I'm not, not uh, like very clear on that concept how it's a remote function call. And, uh, mm -hmm. Don't worry. 
I understand that the exchange of information is happening between. Uh, they're using queues for that. It's uh, uh, mm. synchronized, uh, asynchronous queues, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Like, but uh, right, how right. how how it's a remote call, remote function call. How it's calling the function remotely and a lot of for uh, that also people technical like basis team they are creating an RFC connections. Right. Yeah. Right. How to connect to different systems. Right. If we go here. We have a T nine. SM fifty nine is for creating and maintaining an RFC connection different between different systems. Right, right. SM fifty right? nine. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. This is one of the steps like for creating an RFC for uh, for EWM as well. Right. This is for creating an RFC connection, right? Here you can create a connection. You can define that where you'll be connecting, which system you'll be connecting to, right? If you click on view. Right here, we have the different details of the server with okay. which you will be. Right, we have internal connection, we have logical system, HTTP connection to external server. Okay, right, we have different servers here. Mm -hmm. So, you can connect create your own connections, right? You can give the target system, okay, right, proxy if required. Right, login ID, password, all these things you can give here. Mm -hmm. Getting it will connect to the third party system. Third party system, okay. Yep. Right, so these things, these are the topics which you'll be covering in the course. So, uh, Ankur, my question is like, uh, functional consultant, I don't want to get too much into uh, like coding. If I understand if I'm mm -hmm. able to create like basic reports or basic function modules, not not too complex. Mm -hmm. Like if I get mm -hmm. a flavor of that and I'm uh, uh, like uh, accustomed with the interface and where I need to go and how I need to find things, okay. and will be like, like I said, in the content, we will be doing everything from scratch, right? From the very basic thing, right? How things will be done, right? As far as programming is concerned, how a query is written, how a database is accessed, right? And as far as programming is concerned, like in even Python, you have seen, right? You have different syntaxes and keywords. Using the same syntax and keyword, we can write five line of code, 50 line of code, or a 5,000 line of code. Yeah, I find it so much easier to write a code in Python, but in SAP, it's like so much more complex. They have made this uh, it's user not that, interface. It's not that complex in SAP, right? Even in really? SAP, it's not that. I guess, like, like if you compare, just, just get intimidated by seeing their interface, man. It's so like daunting. <laughs> and, uh, that that's why I uh, I asked uh, Sai to like. I, mm. That's how I agreed that I need some help. Otherwise, I'll just get lost. Like I, if, I just, if I'll just these, you these, menus and, these menus and these uh, like terminologies and everything. If you tell me to like code, I'll I'll, I'll I can code easily. If, on using VBA, using Python, it's a lot more easier. Okay. Like you, you I about that is not that difficult. Let me just show you, right? Like if I'm just creating a program, let's say, right? I guess like just by seeing the program, you can identify what I'm doing. Right, even if I don't tell you anything, right, you can easily identify what the particular program is doing. Right. Okay. What, what I understand all is you find some variables and uh, I don't know what parameters and data how are they parameters different? all the blue ones are the variables. Parameter if you define parameters, that means it is used for the user input. If you're defining data, it is used for the declaring okay. the variable at the program level. Right? Okay. So what I'm doing right now, I'm declaring two variables in parameter that means it will take it take input from the user at runtime mm -hmm. right and then we have a p3 it's a variable declared integer type variable declared at the program level then i have p3 equals to p1 into p2 and display p3 right now if i execute it it will automatically create an interface for me right okay like if it i define for the parameter. okay variables right. so now I'm doing this P1 and P2 are for the function, uh, not function. This is P1 and P2 are for the user input as a parameter. Mm -hmm. Now I have given the, I executed 
right? It will calculate and display me the result. It is 27.6. Right. Right. Now again, what I can do? I can put a condition if if P3 is less less than 1000, right? Else if P3 is greater than 1000, else we have an end if. So here I have defined three conditions. If P3, the value which I'm calculating it is less than 1000, it is greater than 1000, right? And the third scenario, it's, it's, it is 1000 right so what i have done i have written a nail that means none of, if none of the condition will be true it will be get it will be going inside the condition right right so what i'm giving i'm giving a message here mm -hmm. what else here yeah, this part uh, I'm comfortable with, but the interface and everything is it's, it's, it's I think that is not an issue. Yeah, all those things are not an issue unless you do it, right? No, no, I, I'm willing to do it, but it's just that I sometimes I get stuck and there's nobody to ask. I'm saying like you have not done programming, right? Like if you talk about the functional, for a technical person, right, functional thing looks difficult, right? understanding the function of business process from where you're getting data from where you're storing data right mm -hmm. so like if i'm defining a condition here now if i execute it let's say if i'm having this right right say it's the, the value is 492 which is less than thousand right mm -hmm. if i make it right it says more than thousand Right now, if I give it thousand, right? So conditions I can define depending on what kind of condition I am defining, mm -hmm. right? So like you were mentioning about the programming part, so programming is not that difficult, right? Okay. If you see actively, I guess it's better than Python, right? To some extent, mm -hmm. yeah, right. Simple, right? You don't need to worry about right writing any kind of uh, lengthy codes. Python mm -hmm. is also four generation. Math is also four generation language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So you don't need to worry about writing all those. Mm -hmm. Then the code which you used to write so, in PP or. So, uh, cool. Basically, you are from India or uh, are you located in the US? Like, where are you? I'm in. Basically. I'm in from India. Okay. 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 Which part? From Delhi. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. 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 Okay. I'm from Chandigarh. Okay. Yeah. So the thing is, like, we have HCL. I I don't know if you work in HCL or not. Uh, so not in it. Yeah, yeah. So we have HCL as as uh, like HCL supports our business and uh, mm -hmm. it, it takes care of all the uh, like support issues that we have. So oh. so HCL so is yeah. your plan, uh, like you're working for HCL or HCL is our like vendor uh, support vendor or okay mm -hmm. so um yeah so sometimes there are customizations and uh, when, when they do the customizations uh, it's, it's just that like we we need to review it and uh, so that's that's mm -hmm. that's where um this like um oh, if uh, like if, if i if i uh, train on this and that's where it will come in handy to go all the and to right. go through all the codes or, no function right you even if you're from a technical or a functional, you need to have knowledge of both the modules, right? And yes, the you have to be techno function of your field. Yeah, so that's where that's what I uh, my requirement is from from this course. Like, I need to. Mm -hmm. I I know it, it it won't get I won't get 100% like in, in this uh, during this uh, uh, course mm -hmm. or yeah, the sessions, but it's just that I want to get like better understanding of the. Of the technical, so technical person, it will be helping you understanding the code, right code much more easily interacting with the technical team. Your yeah. requirement more like better yeah. from the better perspective. Yeah. What kind of requirement you have, like what kind of requirements are feasible, what are not feasible, right, mm -hmm. and how it can be developed. 
Yeah. Right. And if any point of time if you need to debug, you need to check out for any kind of issues. That can be done quite easily. Yeah. Again, yeah. I don't know debugging, so I uh, need to learn that as well. You, right. You you understand, right? What what I need from this? I mean, you must be more more experienced than me, so you understand, right? Task here. Are you there, Akhil? Uh, sorry? I'm seeing any of the doubts, queries, issues related to anything? No, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm good, yeah. I've explained everything uh, that I need. So if you need the content, like the post content, which I was, which we were discussing, you can, if you want, you can get it from Sai, right? Any the of the doubts, queries? Will you be providing any uh, notes? I mean, you will be getting study material as well. You'll be getting the PDF files, PPTs, right, related to topics which you'll be discussing. Even if you want some kind of programming and codes, I'll be, I can share it with you as well. Programs, codes, for your reference okay. purpose, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And study material, you'll be getting each and everything. Okay, 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 great. Sounds good, man. So any other thing I can help you out with any doubts and queries, Akhil? No, that's pretty much it. Uh, so you can update Sai, right? Sure. Okay then. And uh, it's, it's how many uh, how many hours? It's like thirty-five hours, right? And how are we covering it? Like how? how are we going it's to around twenty-five hours. Sorry. I'm saying like the whole course is gonna take a, a, around twenty-five hours. 25 hours right depending on how fast and how slow you're getting right so it can be a little more it can be a little less right it will be like okay. we'll be having we'll be covering each and every session practically oh, okay, okay it seemed like a lot of content okay, okay 25 hours okay hmm. like if you talk about the content right we are covering each and everything right like right now we were discussing about data parameters right uh -huh. condition so all these things we'll be covering but like everything is coming under programming itself right okay 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 okay, okay. So whatever content you'll be having with covering each and everything so don't worry about that no no it's not about the content uh, content and good i was i was wondering like anyway if it's 25 hours it's better for me like i'll be done sooner uh, it's just about like i was thinking that okay this is a lot i i Honestly, I don't want to do a lot, but uh, whatever I do, if I uh, am able to learn it, I, I am able to retain it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, I've done justice to, the, to what you've taught. So that that's what mm -hmm. my uh, like attitude uh, would be. Right. So you will be, like I said, you'll be getting the course uh, study material, right? All the pro uh, notes you will be getting. Along with that, you'll be having the recording session. Mm -hmm. Right, so any point of time if you want to get back to like any kind of previous session, you will be having the recordings, you can go through it. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, I, I don't want to like go uh, on a very high level. I mean, uh, it's, it's just that I want to be, I want, I need a solid foundation in uh, like give back. Mm -hmm. I guess no, it, it should not have, we should not have any issue related to it. Okay, okay, okay. So if I'm able to navigate, I'm able to search like baddies and bappies and what what code is in there and uh, uh, like right. uh, we'll be debugging course. and uh, building queries and uh, you know right, right. one I I'm not uh, I'm not mm -hmm. I've never created any queries on that even I learned I uh, need to learn that if you can teach me SQ zero one yeah building queries through. right before SQ zero one you need to create a user group right. So once a user group, this can this we can do, right? Yeah, this is yeah, usually done by the hospital. So this is not a big deal, right? Okay, we can okay, do okay. it. To create a user group, you need to uh, SQ03. You need to create a user group, and you need to create a info set in SQ02, and then you have a query in SQ01. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I need to learn this too. Hmm. This is used usually used by the function. Yeah, but we can do it. Not an issue.
Okay, okay. Then and uh, right, how okay. like would be the classes, Ankur? Like, uh, can we have it every alternate day? Because it will be difficult for me to like. I, I'm working full time as well. I, I think so are you. So right. How frequent do you want the classes to be, or uh, what's convenient for you? Even if we like, if you want it to be in alternate days, right? Mm -hmm. Weekdays, right? Yeah. Uh, so not an issue we can have it in weekdays like three days in a week three to four days in a week to, yeah weekends uh it might be possible uh, how, how are you willing to come on the weekends like let's see like initially maybe we can start with a weekday three days in a week right then <laughs> later on we can plan it out like if we can have sessions in the weekend uh or not otherwise initially so we can start it with the weekdays three days in a week yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah, because weekends it's sometimes hard. Like uh, I mean, it's summer's there, so mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, alternate days will be comfortable for me. Actually, yeah. we can start with weekday then, if you want. Yeah, yeah, I think weekday should work for me. Mm -hmm. But if it's not working, yeah, I I can always update you. Yeah. Right. It sounds good. So, uh, when can we start, Ankur? Uh, you can have a word with Sai, right? Then we can plan it out when we can start it. The sooner sure. the better. Yeah, yeah, I'll have a word with him. Fine. Yep. Sounds good. Okay, then. Right. Okay, then. Bye bye. Good night. Take care. Good night. Good. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bye. Okay, bye.